So yeah, let's start. Okay. So uh, today I'll be talking about view components, but mostly about how you can use it in a, how you can still use the same features but in a different environment that doesn't let you use it as you would expect it to. So uh, first of all I'd like to talk about me for a second. My name is Imad. I am AD, Mad with an I, and uh, um, I came to Berlin last September to study masters here, and I've been using Vue.js for I don't know six months, seven months, and I really like it. It's definitely my favorite framework everywhere. So um, okay, so this would be the agenda for today. Uh, first, so this is my first time here. I don't know what kind of level you talk about when you talk about Vue.js. So is it entry? Is it more advanced? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Okay, that's good. But uh, I'd like to give you a new definition to what Vue.js is, from my point of view. So uh, I like to see Vue.js as a framework or a library. So in the website it says it's just a progressive framework. And the way I like to think about it is that when Vue.js is used as a library, it's the same way that you'd use jQuery, for instance. So you just have the strip, script tag in the head, and you just you know, give an ID to a div and initial, initial, initialize a Vue.js instance. And this is cool, this is how I think most of us starting getting to know Vue.js, because it's very simple. But of course it has a lot of, like not restrictions, but if you use it as a framework, which means using like Webpack, Vue CLI, all the cool stuff, for example, you can see that you have things like components, mixes, of course you have UX, so routing of course, authentication and so on and so forth. And all of these, for me, turn Vue.js to a framework. So, um, yeah, so why am, I why am I considering or talking about the different definitions? It's because, uh, of course, this is just a, another thing, for example, that's how a, library usage code would look like, but if you use it as a framework, which means you have a dev server dedicated for the front end, you know, your code will look something like that. And uh, where is the problem? Uh, okay, apparently I'm not gonna talk about the problem yet. <laughs> so uh, this is a tiny, it's not a comparison, so it's not about saying which one is better, but it's just to highlight some things that I think differentiate the two. So, you know, like I said, when it's a framework, you have UCLI, Webpack, you have global components, which means when you create a, like a .view file, you just put it in your components directory, you can just import it from wherever you want. And of course, where you use the one that looks like a library, you can only define that component maybe like at most in the same file and just use it there. So that's a big issue. Of course, you have hot module reloading when you use it as a framework, but when you use it just as a library, you don't have that. And uh, that's just a tiny comparison between the two. Okay, uh, now I'm gonna talk about the problem because you know I'm, I'm trying to talk about another approach of using components. So, what is the problem? Well, it's not no modules, no. That's just a bad joke. The actual, the actual problem is that you know uh, recently everybody's trying to use front ends, like a separate front end when it's just completely built using a framework, be Angular, Vue, React, whatever, and then have just a REST API as a back end. And that is great when you have multiple front ends, maybe you have a mobile app, uh, you know, you have a native desktop application and you just have a shared backend. That's amazing, but there are a lot of cases that I think where you have to use the more traditional way where the backend actually renders the front end and gives it to you. And when you use it like that, it's just, in my experience, it's very difficult to use Vue.js as a framework. You'll have, besides the fact that you'll have two servers, so one for the backend, you'll have one for the front end, uh, a lot of these, imagine like an MVC or an MVT design pattern where you just have a place for the templates and you can kind of can't have that. You can't build, you know, using Vue CLI your front end framework every time you make a change and then have it being reflected in the back end. So, uh, and uh, I'm talking about this because this is what I use for most of my projects because honestly, you know, when you have a deadline, you don't want to, you don't want to worry so much about security. You want to, you don't want to do the same things over and over. I do think that there's a lot of good cases where you should use the outdated way of building websites. Now, the backend that I'll be using is a backend that's kind of popular. It's, it's used by all these: Bitbucket, Instagram, Pinterest, and uh, it's made in Python. It's called Django. Has anyone here ever heard of Django or used it before? Yeah. Okay, so I think Django is an amazing backend 
uh, framework. I shouldn't talk so much about it because you know this is a Vue.js meetup, and mostly a JavaScript meetup. So, but you should really look at it. And uh, this one has an MVT design pattern, so model view templates. And models is you know where you have all your database models. The view is in Django is where you kind of have the logic, connect the templates, use the templates, and put things from the models in them. And the templates is just a folder where, with HTML files. And that's not so easy to use when you want to use Vue.js as a framework, like I said earlier. So that would be my problem, is how to use all the cool features from Vue.js framework in, in an environment where Django is serving the front end for you, and you don't have them as separate entities anymore. Uh, questions so far? I don't know. Okay, cool. So yeah, the goal would be to kind of have the best of both. So having the typical backend serving the frontend has a lot of advantages in my opinion. So for example, you don't need to worry about routing anymore. It doesn't need to be in the frontend. I know there are things like Nox.js that give you server-side rendering, but I still think that when you have it as a backend, it really, it really helps. Uh, things like, uh, let's see, yeah, I, I, I would really like to get the global view components, even when you're serving like in a Django environment. And uh, the auth authentication, what I think, again, this is, I think, opinionated, but authentication with APIs is not as simple. It, it can be as secure, but you have to be careful, as when you just have it from the backend. So I just thought advantages in, in both, and I just wanted to kind of combine them into one and this is kind of my attempt at doing it. So, uh, damn, I'm already halfway through and I'm the only speaker, so I should make this longer. <laughs> so this is how a view, you know, when you're doing it again, with, like when you use Vue CLI and you have some like view loaders for Webpack that will magically convert this into something awesome. There's just a Hello World app in Vue uh, framework, again. And you can't have a .view file as I was saying earlier, put it in the templates folder, it won't work. And when you try to run like yarn dev or you know npm, it's you you, you want you're not gonna know where the files are or how. I think I mean it's a bit complex. So what I what I looked uh, on the, in the documentation and it took me some time to find is that uh, I don't have here a screenshot, but you know when you make a component, but not like this a normal component. You have to like say view the component, and then you have to pass the again the same thing, the data, everything, but it's in the same file and the template, of course. And this is, I think, the worst part is that you have to put the template mostly in a string, and you don't get syntax highlighting, auto completion, and of course the code will look kind of ugly. But luckily, view has this really cool thing that's called X template. Anyone heard of X template for defining components? So this is really cool. This is like pure HTML. You don't need any preprocessor or any loader to have this. So you create a script tag. You just say that the type is text slash xhtml. Sorry, x, uh, uh, x template. And you know you give it an ID. And then you create your components. You open a script tag. You create the component like you would do in a normal, uh, like Vue.js manner as a, like a library. And you can also have the styles. So if you look at the two, they're quite similar. Of course, I'll go a bit further into comparison. They're not exactly the same, but this is quite cool. So what I did in most of my project is that I have a components directory, and in that components, I just have a bunch of components like that. They're HTML, you don't need to pre-process them, nothing. And then using the backend, and I know there's some coupling here, but I think when your model is the front end, uh, is the backend serving the front end, I don't think it's a huge issue. So when it looks like that, all you need to do is just import it in the file, the same way you'd import uh, in a view, uh, in, a, in a, like a module, the, way, the same way you'd import it as a module, except that the syntax would be a bit different because it will depend on your backend. But when you have them like that, you get the global components without Webpack and without the, dev, the front end dev server. And um, I think I'll show you a demo. So, um, for example, so this is in Django, and uh, this, for instance, is the base template. So in Django, you have templates that, uh, 
just like object-oriented programming, where you have this space and you can just extend it, and they'll have the same things. There's something similar in, in view when you use a view CLI. And uh, I just here, for example, define the content block, and every other template that extends this block just uh, will have to implement this, this block, and everything will kind of be inserted here. So all pages will have this content, but it will have some dynamic sections based on these blocks. You don't need to remember any of this, it's not actually important, but uh, here you can see that I'm actually uh, importing view in the base, so it's in every page. So that's a kind of thing that you can use, you know, view in, in whatever page you want, not to just re-import things. And one of the examples of another file that is extending it, so I would just extend it here. And then, like I said, block styles. So I have this block and every style that I write inside this will kind of be put in the styles block here, which I need to, yeah, uh, it's somewhere, I think. So, uh, and then of course the content. So I just give it an ID, because again, I'm using it kind of like a library. You give it an ID and then in the script tag you have to just like pass the element uh, ID or class. Uh, here, this is how I'm importing them right now. So this kind of looks a little bit similar to how you would do them when you're using Vue CLI and you know the UJS as a framework. And uh, for it, like a lot, like a lot of servers, when you make a change, you know the server restarts for the changes to restart. <coughs> and this works pretty well because again, it's not a .dot view file; it's just a .dot HTML. This is just an HTML file, and it will look kind of like this. So, it's just an HTML file, it's, it's not a real problem. Um, so, this is how you would import them. Because you're importing them like this, and it's actually a component, it's already registered in view, so you don't need to pass it here as a, uh, you know, the components, uh, yeah, the key and value. You, you don't have to pass it because it's already being initialized to the view instance in this page. Uh, one of the bad, like one of the examples of using view in a traditional way, and that's what I was doing earlier, something like this. And then I have to, of course, include the, like the JavaScript for it and everything. But then, if I would create a new file in my components directory and put all these things in it, and then I just include it like that, it would really look similar to the way you'd import it in a traditional front-end uh, project that doesn't have any back-end code in it. And uh, yeah, so of course this has a lot of advantages, uh, advantages, uh, disadvantages. I mean, it, it, it does have advantages. You're getting this kind of cool feature, which I think is the most important thing in Vue.js, without having to compromise a lot. So uh, let me just uh, go quickly over the advantages. So yeah, of course, it's kind of lightweight. You don't need a 100 megabytes at least node modules folder. Uh, you get the global components, which is really cool. Uh, it is simple to use, so I don't know about all of you, but Webpack for me is kind of complex. I try to understand it, it never works out for me. So this way, it, it just works. You know what you're doing, kind of, so it's working. Um, you get all the cool backend features. So for example, in Django, just by creating a project, you get authentication. You get uh, like an admin page where you can see all your models, you get routing, it's secure, posts are secure because it automatically implements the CSFR token things. And uh, you don't need to worry about like cross-site attacks or these kind of things because it, it, it's just there, it comes by default. Um, yeah, of course, also for, for development, you only have one server to run, so you just run one server and you can start working. And of course the disadvantages, you probably read them by now. So no hot module reloading. This is horrible, I know. But I didn't yet figure out a way to use it. And of course if I want to get that to work, I would have to use Webpack. Which would still be cool, but I didn't figure out how to do that part yet. Um, coupled, this is questionable, it is. But again, maybe it's not a bad thing. Because from the from the beginning, the whole back and front end are just one big one big thing. Uh, no preprocessors, so which means if you want to use SAS uh, or any other preprocessor for HTML and CSS, uh, even JavaScript, you won't get that. 
and pretty much everything else, like having VUX, which I know is very important, but of course, when you have a backend, you kind of don't need VUX that much. You look confused, am I not actually? <laughs> huh? you look, yeah, you. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think, uh, what, what's going on? <laughs> what, what, what is it about? I mean, the, all these advantages and disadvantages. Uh, of of uh, kind of using Vue.js and a uh, backend oh, okay. in the same place and not having Vue.js, you know, with, a, with Webpack and Vue CLI running. Trying to combine them in one project. So, uh, but yeah. uh, preprocess you can run the preprocess as CSS or what? No. Uh, oh yeah, of course. I mean, you you have less, you less SP, For example, PHP. There's a less PHP uh, compiler. Uh, there, of course, there are ways. And for example, what I'm doing here, I am like my styles are in SAS, mm -hmm. but it's not it's not view or it's not coming from the view part. So you can't have the same way you have in view when you have scoped. Uh, like here you just like uh, add the tag, say that this is SAS and that's it. That's very convenient. So in, in this case it would be more difficult or you'll, ha you'll have, your, you're gonna have to have another structure for your styles and then for every page maybe you're gonna have to have like uh, the page HTML or like the, the view file and then another version for the CSS <coughs> for it. So of course you can have preprocessors but not not the way that like they're in Vue.js when you use it and with the Vue CLI. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I was saying about uh, Vuex. So Vuex isn't present because on each page it's actually a page refresh. And again, this is not server side rendering from like frameworks like Nuxt for Vue. So everything is kind of refreshed whenever you access a new URL. But because this is served from the back end, there it's very easy to pass things between between pages. So it's not a big deal not to have UX in this situation. So, uh, yeah, that's kind of it. <laughs> it's too short, sorry. Any questions? Is it confusing? I want to show you more demos if you, if you, if you wanted or you had some questions about 